The countdown is on for kids going back to school, and that means districts are in full prep mode. The focus this year is on cleanliness and safety, with some schools spending millions on air cleaning devices to ensure that the air students and teachers breathe indoors is safe. However, our investigative unit has learned many of those machines may not work as promised and could even make things worse. Here's senior investigative reporter Bagad Shaban. Three and a half million dollars worth of equipment that's supposed to clean the air indoors is now sitting outdoors in giant storage containers in a parking lot. That's because officials at the Sacramento City Unified School District are worried the technology might actually be dangerous. And they're not the only school district in California that now regrets spending tax dollars on air purifiers they hoped would kill COVID. They want the miracle cure. There's an air cleaning company that promises them the miracle cure. There's money out there to pay for it. Deal done. Bud Offerman has been studying indoor air quality for 40 years. He's a mechanical engineer and regularly tests products that are supposed to filter out harmful particles. Offerman believes that in an effort to sell air cleaning devices, some companies have turned into COVID-19 snake oil salesmen, touting new technology that doesn't work. They're promising uh, more than they can actually do. He says that includes some of the more expensive air purifiers that emit tiny particles, which are supposed to stick to toxins in the air and break them down so they're no longer harmful. It's a technology called bipolar ionization. Because they are putting things in the air and reacting with chemicals in the air, they have the potential to create bad things such as formaldehyde, ozone, ultrafine particles. The Environmental Protection Agency agrees bipolar ionization may generate potentially harmful byproducts indoors. So not only are they not working like they're supposed to, they might actually harm people. Correct. Correct. Offerman has been hired to testify as an expert witness in a lawsuit against one of the country's leading air cleaner manufacturers, Global Plasma Solutions. The company is accused of making false, misleading, and deceptive claims and selling products that make the air worse for people. Global Plasma Solutions has filed a motion to dismiss the case. It insists the lawsuit is built on faulty assumptions and maintains its devices are certified to be safe. We're creating bipolar ionization. Charlie Waddell, the company's founder, addressed the concerns with school officials in March. We've gone through the gauntlet of tests with all these microbiologists and PhDs to prove that it is safe and that it is effective and is doing what we claim. The Berkeley Unified School District bought more than a million dollars worth of air cleaning equipment from Global Plasma Solutions and stands by its purchase. Newark Unified spent 360000 but after it heard about the lawsuit, the district disconnected the devices over safety concerns. The misinformation from the air cleaning devices is so strong, it's hard for the layperson to see through that. The Federal Trade Commission is in charge of investigating deceptive business practices, but we've learned the FTC has not issued a single enforcement action against any air purifying company since the start of the pandemic. So how can you tell the difference between products that actually deliver clean air and those that are just full of hot air? Well, there's now an entire industry devoted to giving you the power to find out. If we have the potential to monitor the quality of the air we breathe everywhere, why wouldn't we? Dustin Devan is the CEO of AWARE, which sells indoor air quality monitors that are designed to detect dangerous pollutants. They can also send real-time health warnings right to your phone. But even the technology behind air quality monitors has its critics. Studies have questioned their accuracy and warn they may underestimate the amount of pollution in the air. AWARE tells us its monitors have a high level of accuracy and say using even more precise sensors, like what you'd find in a lab, would make the devices too expensive for the average consumer. Do you think air quality monitors in buildings will become as common as, say, a smoke detector? I think when you walk into a building, it's going to become almost expected that there's a display showing the quality of the air in, in that facility. Indoor air quality monitors aren't required in buildings, but could be one day. For now, a lack of rules and regulations are only adding to the confusion over which devices actually work. It could be a while before lawmakers are able to catch up to the technology and finally clear the air. With the investigative unit, I'm Begat Shaban.